In this video, I'm gonna show you what effects I use and how I'm processing my vocals for our live stream. Hello, I'm Stephen Ballast. Welcome to my channel where I explore worship technology solutions. Someone asked me through my Facebook page the other day after watching my video on crowd mics, how do I process my vocals? What settings and effects I use? I thought this would be a good thing to demonstrate in a video because usually the thing that suffers in a live stream mix the most is the vocals. When you strip away the room and send what people are singing directly out over the stream, it's not always a pleasing thing to listen to. So I wanted to show you what I'm doing to process my vocals. First, let's listen to what I'll be working with here. I'm playing back these tracks as a virtual sound check through our live streaming mixer. We mix in Reaper, which is a DAW on a computer, and this mixer is just a control surface so I can use actual faders to control the mix in the DAW. This is the band with the vocals dry and unprocessed. Everything on the lead vocal is bypassed. I have boosted the vocal volume a bit to maintain balance because when I add in some of the effects, it will increase the volume. Yes, one of all. Lift up our eyes, see the King has come. Light of the world reaching. There's obviously a lot of work we need to do there. He is really choked up on his mic, so there's a ton of proximity effect, which is making it sound really muddy. So first, we'll add in some EQ. I'm using the Waves Renaissance EQ and also the SSL channel. I use the Renaissance EQ to be a bit more surgical and notch out a few things I'm not liking. And then I use the SSL channel to shape the overall tone. In the REQ, I've got a high pass filter around 80 Hz and a low shelf EQ taking just a few dB off below 200 Hz to help with that proximity effect of the microphone. Then I'm notching out a few places that are building up in his vocal. First at 190. When all the world seems lost, behold the triumph of the cross and then another taking out some boxiness at 386 and that's all i'm doing with his eq next in the signal chain i've got an rvox which is a great plug-in on vocals it starts to add some compression to the vocal which helps to keep the vocal under control it's not going to let it get too loud I've got it set to be just taking off a few dB. I found in his name the greatest name of all. Then in the SSL channel, I do the final shaping of the overall tone that I want. I'm adding quite a bit of high end, 6 dB at around 6K for some air, and 4 dB at 2.4K to help it cut through. And also cutting back some of the low end. It helps to adjust this EQ listening to his voice in the context of the mix. This is probably more high-end than I would add if I were listening in solo, but in the context of the whole mix, it's needed to cut through. There is no other name, Jesus Christ our God, seated on high, the undefeated one, mountains bow down. Finally, I'm going into a C4 compressor. This is a multi-band compressor that's just going to act on the frequency bands when it's needed. Each band just acts on the frequencies within the range you set to compress them if they start to build up too much. I've got it set again mainly to compress the low end if he really digs into his mic, and on the top end to do a little de-essing. So that's my chain for this particular vocal. I've got an EQ feeding into a compressor, feeding into the SSL channel EQ, which also has a compressor, and then feeding into the multiband compressor. Several compressors, each taking off a few dB of volume, is going to sound more natural than one compressor that's really banging away at the signal. That reminds me, I forgot to mention that I have another compressor on the vocal bus. All the vocals are feeding into this bus, and it has a Pugue Child 670 on it. Again, just taking a few dB off the signal. So what all this does is give me a really consistent volume in my vocals. I can use the faders to set the balance between my vocalists, and unless something really drastic happens, I know that it's gonna stay like that. 
Now when I'm mixing, I may back off the compressors a little bit because I know I'm gonna be on top of it. But if I have a volunteer mixing, I'll hit the compressors a little harder and maybe sacrifice some compression artifacts so that they can keep a really consistent mix. When it comes to adding effects, the first thing I use is my crowd mics. If you haven't seen my video on crowd mics, go and watch that because a big part of how I help the vocals out is with the AR bus, which stands for audience response. This is made up of eight microphones around the room that helps bring back some of the room sound and contains a lot of natural reverb and reflections from the singers that happens in the room as well. So let's add that into the mix. Shines brighter than the sun. His grace as boundless as his love. He reigns with healing in his wings. The King of all kings. The So already that's sounding a lot better and more natural. I usually do add in some reverb though and that just gives it a little more polish. So let's mute the AR bus for a minute so you can hear the reverb clearer. Here's what it sounds like and then I'll show you what I'm doing. Lift up our eyes, see the King has come. Light up. My technique here is based on or adapted from Andrew Stone and something I heard him say at an MXU conference. And that is to be meticulous about what parts of a reverb sound you use. What I've done is to create a reverb high and a reverb low channel. On the low channel, I have a longer hall sound coming from an R verb. And I've put an EQ before it that is shaping it to just the low end part of the reverb that I like. The EQ is getting rid of some of the muddy too low stuff, and I'm also getting rid of the top end that starts to sound metallic-y. I, I don't know how else to describe it. But just that lower middle part of the reverb has a nice big room sound. On the reverb high channel, again I've got an EQ that's shaping the sound into an Abbey Rhodes plate reverb, which has a nice shimmering top end, but the mid-range tends to get a bit honky. So now put those two together. One of the nice things about having those two different sounds on two faders is just by adjusting the balance between those two reverbs, I can change the overall tone. So a really fast song where the longer low reverb sound would muddy things up, I can pull that down and have the high verb help the vocal cut through with that shimmering top end. And for a slower song that I want to sound really big and expansive, I can just turn up the low verb and pull back on the high verb a bit. So finally, let's listen to the full mix with both the AR mics and the reverb, and I'll turn them on and off a bit so you can hear what each is contributing. So to review, from a high level, how I approach processing my vocals. First, EQ and notch out anything that's building up too much. Then shape the tone of the vocal. Run it through several stages of compression, each taking just a few dB off to get the vocal really consistent. 
usually for the signal chain, I EQ into a compressor, EQ into a compressor. Then use crowd mics and reverb to help polish it and give it a big sound. When it comes to balance between vocals and everything else, at the moment where I'm at, and this may change and develop over time, but right now when I'm mixing congregational singing, that's when there is a crowd of people singing along in a worship service. While well, I always want the lead vocal to be clear and distinct and always heard, I'm tending to give them a little competition from the AR mics. I find that one, it sounds more like the actual experience in the room, and two, it helps the vocalists out. It can help cover up some of the imperfections in their voice. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, be sure and give it a thumbs up. This came from one of your suggestions, so if there's something you'd like to see, let me know, leave a comment, or you can get in touch with me on my Facebook page. And be sure and subscribe to my channel to see more of my videos. Until next time, bye. Yeah, we'll see.